Okay, so today I want to talk about how do you select your event targets. And by that I mean, how do you decide what to attach your event listeners to? Very often, you're going to be working with web pages and you want somebody to click on something on your page. And you want to get information from that click. You want to know what was the object they clicked on and potentially other things, other related bits of information. So I'm going to talk about different ways that you can approach adding your event listeners and getting that information. So here we have a unordered list and I've got some ID numbers placed inside of here beside text. And when the user clicks on this, I want to be able to get the name and I want to be able to get this number. So I'm going to use that someplace else in my code. Taking a look at the basic structure, we've got a series of list items and inside here, as the text for the list item, we've got a number, colon, space, and then another tag span. I put the other span here because I wanted to be able to style this. So this is a fairly common structure. You've got two pieces of information inside of any HTML element. Use a span around it so you can target the individual pieces and style them slightly differently. My styles for the list item would apply to everything here and then I can override those or change them with the span. So in my styles I'm actually doing this. Here's my default styles for the list item, and then list item span, I'm changing the font weight. So this is going to have a heavier font weight than this. All right, not that important for what we're doing, but just to show that you can separate the content. Now, if I added a listener onto every one of these list items, so we had a click listener, that's fine. Now, when I click on the li, I get the inner HTML. That's easy to get then I have to deal with the fact that there's an extra tag here. One other problem we've got is if we attach the listener to the list item itself, what happens when the user clicks here on this piece of text? If they click here, then this is going to be the target of my event, the span element. If they click on the number, the li, if they click on the span, it's the span. So there's two different targets happening here. Depending on how I've written my code, so down here I've got two different uh, versions. One is list view, which is the UL. I'm adding the click listener to the UL. Another way is I get all of the list items, so everything with the class list item. Right here you can see that that is LI. With this, I have to loop through to add my click listeners, but I am adding it to each LI. So I've got UL as the one listener. I've got li as a whole bunch of different listeners. They're both calling the same function, but I have to be aware of what's the difference between target and current target. And I have to be aware of the fact that users could click on the number, the space, so this little bit of, bit of text right here, or they could click on this span. The span is there for me to do styling, and it's an important part of my interface but I have to be able to deal with that in my script. So they can click here, they could click here, they can click somewhere, anywhere online, and, and LI by default is display block. That means it goes across the whole screen, so if they clicked a little bit to the right of this name, they would also be clicking on the LI. So we have to deal with that. Now something else that I will commonly do is inside my containing element, I will take this information, if the information is split up between two different parts of the HTML, I will go up to the parent element and I'll add a couple of data properties. This way, I know if I get to the LI, regardless of what they click on, if I get to the LI, I can have access to that information in two separate attributes. This is part of the HTML5 spec. We're allowed to create any attributes we want as long as we start them with data and a hyphen. Call it whatever you want after that. So here's our IDs, here's our text. We want to get these pieces of information and pass them along. So where now do we attach the listener? We can put the listener on the span, we can put the listener on the LI, we can put the listener on the UL. If we put it on the UL, we are being a little bit more efficient. We're adding one listener as opposed to a long list of them, or on the span, a long list of them. So that may be a better option for us, but regardless of which of these three levels we attach the listener to, we have to be able to 
then travel down through or back and forth through the HTML. We have to understand the parent-child relationship between these different elements. If the listener's on the UL, I need a way of getting to the LI. If the listener's on the LI, I have to deal with the fact that they could click on the span. Then I have to check, okay, the thing that they clicked on, is it a span or is it the LI? Now, one, one thing that we can do that will help us is inside our click function, there are actually two properties on the event. There's target and current target. So let's take a look and see what these are doing slightly differently. When I click on here on the span, now I've got both click listeners are going to run, the one for the UL and the one for the LIs. The one for the LIs is going to run first because I added it afterwards. So I'll click on one of the spans. Now the target was the HTML span element. I clicked on the word, so the span is what I clicked on. That is the target. Current target was the LI. That means that the original listener was actually attached to the LI. And it doesn't matter if I click on the LI itself, this piece of text, or over here. My target's going to change, but my current target will always be the thing that I attached the listener to. So right here, this LI. That is my current target. Okay, And then here's the one. I didn't click again on the page. This is just the additional alert that's coming up from the UL listener. So the span was what I targeted. Current target is the UL list element. So the UL, right here, this listener, that was the current target. Now if I come back in here and I comment out this line, so I'm not adding those LI listeners. There we go. I click again in the span. Span is the target. Current target is the UL. Click down here. Span is the target. Current target is the UL. If I click on one of the numbers, the LI was the target. Current target is the UL. So two different ways that we can do this. One, if I don't need specific data, if I just need to know that one of these guys was clicked on, uh, if I don't have extra HTML in here, I know it's just going to be one piece of text, then by all means attach your listener to the UL. Then all you have to do is listen for current target. You know it's the UL. And then you know one of these list items was clicked on. If I'm having to differentiate a lot, different ways of approaching it, moving up and down through the uh, element tree, target, well let's, let's do it that way actually, let's do it the slightly more complex way. So I'm going to comment out my UL listener. And I click on the span. Current target is the LI. I click on the number. Both the target and current target are LI. So this is the differentiation. I have to figure out what they're clicking on. I need to get to that LI. Inside of here, I want to get this data ID and this data name from the LI. So, current target, that's my li. So, we'll say the id, current target, that's the li, dot get attribute. And uh, data id is that one. And then the name, data name. We're going to put it up inside this h2 here. We're going to write those two values out. Just target it simply like that. And then h2.text content will be the id plus colon and a space and the name. I could have used the template string here, but just go with that for now. All right. So if I click on the span, target was my span, current target was the LI, I used the current target, and there we go, 11, Bobby. I click on the number, so I'm clicking on the LI. Because I'm using current target, I'm able to get both things. Great, so that works. Now let's uh, change it slightly. I'll make 
a separate function for this, so we can just leave this one alone. I'm just going to comment it out, but I'll leave it in my code. So let on click two. And now what we're doing is we've added only one click listener. So we're not doing anything in the click listener. No code is running, but we are calling this on click to function. Now my target and my current target are going to be different. My target, my current target rather, is whatever I put in front of the add event listener. That's my UL. So my UL does not have this data ID or data name. My UL doesn't have the information I need. The target does if my target is the LI. My problem is that it could be the span. So inside of here, we need to check and find out what is the target. So I'll just throw an alert up here. So ev.target. And we can do this, dot tag name. This is going to, instead of writing out the, uh, the full thing like HTML, LI, element, We have to, um, sorry, list view, add event listener, click on click two. Oh, we didn't pass in EV. That's what we didn't do. There we are. All right, so span was what I clicked on. If I click the number, LI is what I clicked on. If I click over here on the side, LI is what I'm clicking on. So for almost all this thing, the LI is going to be my target. But if I click right here, or anywhere on the name itself, I'm going to be getting span. That's the thing that we have to work around. So what we want to do is we want to determine whether or not this tag name property is li or span. So an if statement. And say if ev.target.tagName equals li, and thankfully that property always comes back in capitals, so we know this will be capitalized. Else, set it to something else. Okay, now actually I'm just going to shorten this. I'm going to make uh, span the thing that I'm checking for, and I'll set a default value for this. So I'll say target equals ev.target and if it's not, so I'm assuming here that it's an li, then I'm checking to see what's the tag name span? If it is, then I have to go to the parent. And on the parent, we can just get that by saying uh, target, we're resetting the value of target to be ev.target.parentElement. So if this was the target of the click, if I clicked inside of here, I want to go up to the parent, which is the list item. Okay, now target here, I'm assuming li, but then I'm confirming whether or not it is. I'm asking, is it span? If it is, go up to the parent of the target, which is the li. Now I know that the target is the li. Then we're going to do the exact same thing that we did down here. The only difference is, instead of that, we're going to use our variable target. Or, I mean, this variable could be li if we wanted, like that doesn't have to be the word target. There we are. So we're saying, if it's an li, great. We're assuming that. Check to see if it's span. Check to see if we were wrong. If it is the span, go to the parent element. And that's what we're putting inside the li. Now we can get those variables that we wanted. All right. Refresh this. Clicking on the list item, so clicking on the number. Li, great. There it worked. If I click way over here, I'm clicking on the Li. It works. Um, I'll do it on the next one here just to show that yes, actually it did still work. And then if I click on the span, go down to here, Bobby, 
span is what I clicked on, and it still works because we went up to the parent. So you can set your click listeners on one single thing, one parent element that contains everything, as long as you understand the difference between target and current target, and you can find the information you want. Just understand that you might have to go up or down through this parent-child relationship in the tags to actually get to the information that you want. So when you're designing it, sometimes less is more. You can choose to have it just on the UL, and if you put the click listener on the UL, you're getting everything inside of it at the same time. All right, so I hope that helps you out with your uh, event listeners and planning out your code. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.